and it doesn't work. It gets you out of a mild recession and it blows the bubble bigger. But finally, when the big bubble bursts, you have to retract. You have to have a new system. And right now, there's not enough confidence in the dollar so, reserve standard. So, That's what we've been working with. So you don't believe that. So you said, again, there's, there's really no magic bullet here. Uh, if everyone kind of shored up their balance sheets, whether it's consumers or banks, then we'd have one bad year, uh, but then we would recover. But what has been sold to the American public by media, and we can take responsibility of that as well, and by Washington, is that it's, it wouldn't just be one bad year. We would be in a depression that we have never seen before. So do you fundamentally disagree with that prediction? Oh, I, I sure do, uh, because... Most of the uh, comments that we do here and most of the understanding here in Washington uh, have all, all the individuals have studied Keynesian economics and this is what they teach. They don't teach Austrian free market sound money economics. And uh, that's the reason we are destined to prolong the agony. I mean, we've been in this now, I guess in 07, we're working on our second year mm -hmm. and there's been no improvement with right. trillions of dollars of credit and spending and nothing is happening except the, mar the economy gets weaker. So people ought to wake up and start looking at the Austrian School of Economic well, Thought there are a lot it's of free people, markets. It's what makes America great. There are a lot of people, Congressman, who do agree with you. We were getting um, messages on our board throughout the interview. Well, I'm with the Congressman. I'm with Ron on this one. And then you're, you obviously have this big following, as we remember from when you ran for president, certainly on the Internet. Now, then one more historical um, question from me would be this. You, Austrian School of Economics, you brought it up, and it is this laissez-faire kind of free market uh, thinking on, on the economic spectrum, certainly different than, than Keynesian economics, as you say. Um, what's an example in history in which that approach has worked to get us out of well, or to deal with a crisis? Not a, not a slowdown, not, you know, not slower economic growth, but an economic crisis. Where, when has the Austrian School practically worked? Well, I would say 1921, which I've already mentioned because it was mostly hands-off and we got over it rather quickly. But I would say the last part of the uh, 19th century was a pretty good, tremendous economic growth and prices gradually went down a little bit. But we're taught in school now that dropping prices means deflation is very dangerous. No, on sound money, free market economics, because of productivity, your dollar becomes more valuable and you become richer. Today, we are determined to make your dollar weaker because that's the only way they can pay off government debt is to deflate, depreciate the currency because we never can literally pay it uh, in, in a nominal sense. We have to liquidate the debt through the depreciation of the dollar because that's why Bernanke is praying for inflation, which means he's praying to destroy the wealth of savers. We want people to save their money. They want to have their money so when there is a problem and house prices should go down even more, then they can buy up the assets. But we're interfering with all those decisions. The good parts of, uh, say, General Motors, no, we haven't had a bankruptcy and buy up the good parts. We are patching up together as a, 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 a uh, company that hasn't been functioning very well. Same way with the banks and AIG. We don't allow the correction to occur. And the sooner we do that, the sooner this thing will end. You know, Congressman, it's interesting. I just asked the question to our viewers, uh, should Ron Paul run for president again and have a couple people weighing in saying, yes, absolutely. And one of the things that always comes from your interviews that, that surprises me is just how logical you are, which is just says, you know, uh, stop being in debt. Stop being, you know, so in debt that you can't function. Just save. It seems so logical. Do you find down in Washington that it's just too logical for people to understand? Yeah, well, I imagine that's why I don't fit in too well here in Washington. You know, they haven't exactly uh, held uh, in high esteem people who were logical and, and made sense so how because can you it affect interferes with power. So, right. Well, yeah. So how can you affect change? Well, I, I try to affect it by doing what I've been doing for 30 years, uh, talking about and voting a precise way to set a record and try to set a standard. And I thought that's exactly where it would end and not too many people would notice, and I hope maybe someday they would. In the last year or so since I was in that presidential race, I found out there were more people there that, out there that right. I ever dreamed of. And the young people are very, very interested in sound free market economics. And they're studying now and they're looking at it. They're going to the Mises Institute and they're getting the books and the literature because they cannot find these answers in a public school because the government pays for the public school. So they have to teach government control so they won't teach real, true free market economics. Last question, Congressman, would be this. I mean, uh, he for all the, 
the talk about what should be done versus what is, be, what is being done, there's a political reality, uh, reality that you're well aware of and what's happening in Washington and, and how this is going to play out is probably much different from the way you'd like to see it play out. With that in mind, what do you think the country's going to look like a year from now? I mean, it, how worried are you about the future? I mean, how bad could this get, in other words? Well, my biggest worry is loss of liberty. And uh, when you have economic chaos, they resort to taking away more liberty, just as they do when there's a uh, hot uh, military war going on. But people suffer from loss of liberty. So we are going to have less liberties in one year, and the country is going to be much poorer, and there'll be a higher unemployment rate, and then you're going to have price inflation. You're going to see the devaluation of the dollar where it will translate into higher prices. So it doesn't look good as long as we continue to do what we're doing. But I'm optimistic that if we did the right things, which we're capable of if we get enough support, we can solve this problem rather quickly. And it's, it's not all that complicated. Once again, it's pretty logical. Why don't we just obey the Constitution? And then we find all our answers there because it's the disobeying of the Constitution. I mean, there's no authority for a central bank in the Constitution. Why don't we right. open the books for the Federal Reserve? I have a bill to look at the Federal Reserve. Why don't we expose this fourth branch of government? Those kind of things would bring, bring solutions rather quickly. Congressman, thanks a lot. It was, I hope you do the show again because there's a good chance to kind of talk things uh, things through in depth. But thanks a lot for coming on. Thank you. Congressman Ron Paul from Texas. Now, the great thing, whether you disagree or agree or anything with, with Congressman Paul, is that unlike some of his colleagues, he's thought about these.